Hydrangeas have always been popular for New Orleans gardeners, but actually a new type of hydrangea is becoming increasingly popular. Dan Gill from the LSU Ag Center joins us with some of the differences between these plants. Good morning. Good morning. So these are two examples of hydrangeas, yes. two totally different. And you're saying this is the new kind. It is. Now, the old garden hydrangeas we've grown for such a yeah. long time, they have these wonderful dome-shaped tops, and that distinguishes them from this new type of hydrangea, a different species altogether. This is hydrangea macrophylla, okay. and this is a hydrangea paniculata. So they're related, but then they're both hydrangeas, but this is different. Look at the flower head, for it's instance. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous large head, but it's pointed here up at the top. You can see that with this one particularly well. This is called limelight paniculata hydrangea because the flowers first open a green color mm -hmm. then they turn to a, a white color and in this species it's all white there aren't the colors that you oh, see okay. unfortunately this one in the in garden like every color. blue pink yeah. purple but the flowers do change from green to white and then they'll age to a rosy red color uh, over time these hydrangeas are also much taller growing you can see yes. how this is shorter and this is a lot more vigorous growing and is this one going to do well here in New Orleans they do very well here we've had years of growth on them now relatively new but years of growth so we know they like our climate, they do well here. Uh, they take more sun than the garden hydrangeas. We put these in shady spots. These will go right out in part sun to, to part shade. Even full sun, these will grow beautifully okay. in. So uh, they'll take more sun and more drought tolerant. So overall, these are more robust, stronger plants as far as putting in sunnier, drier spots in the landscape. But don't overwater them. You know how hydrangeas love the water? Yes, I was gonna ask that because I have some hydrangeas at my house and I have no clue how to water them. Well, Not they like clue. lots of water. Now, we're getting so much rain, I have to water, right. worry about it all that much. But how but, often? Uh, depends on the rain. Oh. See, it depends on the rain. So okay. if we're getting plenty of rain, don't worry about it. But when we go about a week without a good rain, check on your hydrangeas. These will do a lot better with a lot less water, but they're prone to root rot if you water them too much. Mm. So don't pamper these. When you put them in, water them enough to keep them happy, but don't overwater them. You'll get root rot on them. And that's the one thing that they have a problem with. Okay, what about pruning? Well, pruning is distinctly different as well. Yeah. Great question. These set their flower buds the year before. So these hydrangeas will set their flower buds for next year, uh, sometime in August, uh, oh, generally wow. speaking. The paniculatas set their flower buds on new growth that comes out in the spring. So these, we start pruning them back sometime in early to mid-July. Okay. The paniculatas we prune back in February if we want to, and that stimulates the new growth with lots of flowers on it. So the pruning is, is quite different. And that's why I wanted to come on yeah. and explain to people people that these are both hydrangeas, but they really have different personalities and different care needs. And they're both absolutely beautiful. When it comes to hydrangeas, should people leave them in pots? Should they plant them in the ground? Does it matter? I don't know if that's a stupid question or not, but <laughs> it's not does because it, does it, do they both work? <laughs> because a lot of people love to grow plants in containers. Yeah. These can, now they're gonna need a good size container, much larger than the, these containers that they're in for a long time, uh, but they will grow beautifully uh, in containers as well. Um, and again, uh, in containers, you can keep them evenly watered yeah. and it really sets off the plant. And with hydrangeas, sometimes they're in bloom and sometimes they're not. In the winter time, they lose their leaves. All of these lose their leaves. So if you had it in a pot, you could move it into an out of the way spot where, yeah. you know, it's not on display when it's beautifully in bloom, uh, you can put it back out again. The rain has had some issues with these. We were talking about these spots earlier. I was going to mention, because you mentioned leaves, there are some spots and some discoloration on this one. Absolutely. This is a, a, a real common disease called Cicospora leaf spot. I'll turn that leaf around there. These purplish spots are showing up on lots of these hydrangeas mm -hmm. because of all the rain. Uh, the leaves will eventually yellow and okay. drop, collect all those and dispose of them. And you can spray your plants with dacanil. It's a fungus side called dacanil um, and that'll help minimize the spotting but if we can get some drier weather that will help but we also notice that on this paniculata there is no leaf spot so these tend to get fewer diseases than the traditional garden hydrangeas do as well so if you got a nice sunny spot for a nice tall plant with these gorgeous flowers on them wonderful focal point plant think about adding these I would buy these now in bloom if I wanted and I'd plant them in the fall I, I have to cut you off we'll right. be right back after the break <laughs> 